Beatrix Potter, Helen Beatrix Potter, British English, North American English also, 28th of July 186,622 December 1943, was an English writer, illustrator, natural scientist, and conservationist best known for her children's books featuring animals, such as those in the tale of Peter Rabbit. Born into an upper-class household, Potter was educated by governesses and grew up isolated from other children. She had numerous pets and spent holidays in Scotland and the Lake District, developing a love of landscape, flora, and fauna, all of which she closely observed and painted. Though Potter was typical of women of her generation in having limited opportunities for higher education, her study in watercolors of fungi led to her being widely respected in the field of mycology. In her 30s, Potter self-published the highly successful children's book The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Following this, Potter began writing and illustrating children's books full-time. In all, Potter wrote 30 books, the best known being her 23 children's tales. With the proceeds from the books and a legacy from an aunt, in 1905 Potter bought Hilltop Farm in near Surrey, a village in the Lake District which at that time was in Lancashire. Over the following decades, she purchased additional farms to preserve the unique hill country landscape. In 1913, at the age of 47, she married William Healis, a respected local solicitor from Hawkshead. Potter was also a prize-winning breeder of Herdwick sheep and a prosperous farmer keenly interested in land preservation. She continued to write and illustrate, and to design spin-off merchandise based on her children's books for British publisher Warren, until the duties of land management and her diminishing eyesight made it difficult to continue. Potter died of pneumonia and heart disease on December 22, 1943 at her home in near Surrey at the age of 77, leaving almost all her property to the National Trust. She is credited with preserving much of the land that now constitutes the Lake District National Park. Potter's books continue to sell throughout the world in many languages with her stories being retold in song, film, ballet, and animation, and her life depicted in a feature film and television film. Potter's paternal grandfather, Edmund Potter, from Glossop in Derbyshire, owned what was then the largest calico printing works in England, and later served as a member of Parliament. Beatrix's father, Rupert William Potter, 1832-1914, was educated at Manchester College by the Unitarian philosopher Dr. James Martineau. He then trained as a barrister in London. Rupert practiced law, specializing in equity law and conveyancing. He married Helen Leach. 1839-1932, on August 8, 1863 at Hyde Unitarian Chapel, G. Cross. Helen was the daughter of Jane Ashton, 1806-1884, and John Leach, a wealthy cotton merchant and shipbuilder from Stalybridge. Helen's first cousins were Harriet Lupton, née Ashton, and Thomas Ashton, first Baron Ashton of Hyde. It was reported in July 2014 that Beatrix had personally given a number of her own original hand-painted illustrations to the two daughters of Dr. Arthur and Harriet Lupton, who were cousins to both Beatrix and Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge. Beatrix's parents lived comfortably at Two Bolton Gardens, West Brompton, where Helen Beatrix was born on July 28, 1866 and her brother Walter Bertram on 14 March 1872. Beatrix lived in the house until her marriage in 1913. The house was destroyed in the Blitz. Boosfield Primary School now stands where the house once was. A blue plaque on the school building testifies to the former site of the Potter home. Both parents were artistically talented, and Rupert was an adept amateur photographer. Rupert had invested in the stock market and by the early 1890s was extremely wealthy. Potter's family on both sides were from the Manchester area. They were English Unitarians, associated with dissenting Protestant congregations, influential in 19th century England, that affirmed the oneness of God and that rejected the doctrine of the Trinity. Beatrix was educated by three able governesses, the last of whom was Annie Moore, née Carter, just three years older than Beatrix, who tutored Beatrix in German as well as acting as ladies' companion. She and Beatrix remained friends throughout their lives and Annie's eight children were the recipients of many of Potter's delightful picture letters. It was Annie who later suggested that these letters might make good children's books. She and her younger brother Walter Bertram, 1872-1918, grew up with few friends outside their large extended family. Her parents were artistic, interested in nature, and enjoyed the countryside. As children, Beatrix and Bertram had numerous small animals as pets which they observed closely and drew endlessly. 
In their schoolroom, Beatrix and Bertram kept a variety of small pets, mice, rabbits, a hedgehog and some bats, along with collections of butterflies and other insects which they drew and studied. Beatrix was devoted to the care of her small animals, often taking them with her on long holidays. In most of the first 15 years of her life, Beatrix spent summer holidays at Delguise, an estate on the River Tay in Perthshire, Scotland. There she sketched and explored an area that nourished her imagination and her observation. Beatrix and her brother were allowed great freedom in the country and both children became adept students of natural history. In 1887, when Dalguise was no longer available, the Potters took their first summer holiday in the Lake District, at Ray Castle near Lake Windermere. Here Beatrix met Hardwick Ronsley, vicar of Ray and later the founding secretary of the National Trust whose interest in the countryside and country life inspired the same in Beatrix and who was to have a lasting impact on her life. At about the age of 14, Beatrix began to keep a diary. It was written in a code of her own devising which was a simple letter-for-letter letter substitution. Her journal was important to the development of her creativity, serving as both sketchbook and literary experiment. In tiny handwriting she reported on society, recorded her impressions of art and artists, recounted stories and observed life around her. The journal, decoded and transcribed by Leslie Linder in 1958, does not provide an intimate record of her personal life, but it is an invaluable source for understanding a vibrant part of British society in the late 19th century. It describes Potter's maturing artistic and intellectual interests, her often amusing insights on the places she visited, and her unusual ability to observe nature and to describe it. Started in 1881, her journal ends in 1897 when her artistic and intellectual energies were absorbed in scientific study and in efforts to publish her drawings. Precocious but reserved and often bored, she was searching for more independent activities and wished to earn some money off her own while studifully taking care of her parents, dealing with her especially demanding mother, and managing their various households. Beatrix Potter's parents did not discourage higher education. As was common in the Victorian era. Women of her class were privately educated and rarely went to university. Beatrix Potter was interested in every branch of natural science save astronomy. Botany was a passion for most Victorians and nature study was a popular enthusiasm. Potter was eclectic in her tastes, collecting fossils, studying archaeological artifacts from London excavations, and interested in entomology. In all these areas she drew and painted her specimens with increasing skill. By the 1890s her scientific interests centered on mycology. First drawn to fungi because of their colors and evanescence in nature and her delight in painting them, her interest deepened after meeting Charles McIntosh, a revered naturalist and amateur mycologist, during a summer holiday in Dunkeld in Perthshire in 1892. He helped improve the accuracy of her illustrations, taught her taxonomy, and supplied her with live specimens to paint during the winter. Curious as to how fungi reproduced, Potter began microscopic drawings of fungus spores, the agarics, and in 1895 developed a theory of their germination. Through the connections of her uncle Sir Henry Enfield Roscoe, a chemist and vice-chancellor of the University of London, she consulted with botanists at Kew Gardens, convincing George Massey of her ability to germinate spores and her theory of hybridization. She did not believe in the theory of symbiosis proposed by Simon Schwendner, the German mycologist, as previously thought. Rather she proposed a more independent process of reproduction. Rebuffed by William Thistleton Dyer, the director at Kew, because of her gender and her amateur status, Beatrix wrote up her conclusions and submitted a paper, on the germination of the spores of the Agaricinii, to the Linnean Society in 1897. It was introduced by Massey because, as a female, Potter could not attend proceedings or read her paper. She subsequently withdrew it, realizing that some of her samples were contaminated but continued her microscopic studies for several more years. Her paper has only recently been rediscovered, along with the rich, artistic illustrations and drawings that accompanied it. Her work is only now being properly evaluated. Potter later gave her other mycological and scientific drawings to the Armit Museum and Library in Ambleside, where mycologists still refer to them to identify fungi. There is also a collection of her fungus paintings at the Perth Museum and Art Gallery in Perth, Scotland donated by Charles McIntosh. In 1967, the mycologist W.P.K. Finley included many of Potter's beautifully accurate fungus drawings in his wayside and woodland fungi, thereby fulfilling her desire to one day have her fungus drawings published in a book. In 1997, 
the Linnean Society issued a posthumous apology to Potter for the sexism displayed in its handling of her research. Potter's artistic and literary interests were deeply influenced by fairies, fairy tales and fantasy. She was a student of the classic fairy tales of Western Europe as well as stories from the Old Testament, John Bunyan's The Pilgrim's Progress and Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin. She grew up with Aesop's Fables, the fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm and Hans Christian Andersen, Charles Kingsley's The Water Babies, the folk tales and mythology of Scotland, the German Romantics, Shakespeare, and the romances of Sir Walter Scott. As a young child, before the age of eight, Edward Lear's Book of Nonsense, including the much-loved The Owl and the Pussycat, and Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland had made their impression, although she later said of Alice that she was more interested in Tenniel's illustrations than what they were about. The Brer Rabbit stories of Joel Chandler Harris had been family favorites, and she later studied his Uncle Remus stories and illustrated them. She studied book illustration from a young age and developed her own tastes, but the work of the picture book triumvirate Walter Crane, Kate Greenaway, and Randolph Caldecott, the last an illustrator whose work was later collected by her father, was a great influence. When she started to illustrate, she chose first the traditional rhymes and stories, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty. Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves, Puss in Boots, and Red Riding Hood. But most often her illustrations were fantasies featuring her own pets, mice, rabbits, kittens, and guinea pigs. In her teenage years, Potter was a regular visitor to the art galleries of London, particularly enjoying the summer and winter exhibitions at the Royal Academy in London. Her journal reveals her growing sophistication as a critic as well as the influence of her father's friend, the artist Sir John Everett Millay who recognized Beatrix's talent of observation. Although Potter was aware of art and artistic trends, her drawing and her prose style were uniquely her own. As a way to earn money in the 1890s, Beatrix and her brother began to print Christmas cards of their own design, as well as cards for special occasions. Mice and rabbits were the most frequent subject of her fantasy paintings. In 1890, the firm of Hildesheimer and Faulkner bought several of her drawings off her rabbit Benjamin Bunny to illustrate verses by Frederick Weatherly titled A Happy Pair. In 1893, the same printer bought several more drawings for Weatherly's Our Dear Relations, another book of rhymes, and the following year Potter sold a series of frog illustrations and verses for Changing Pictures, a popular annual offered by the art publisher Ernest Nister. Potter was pleased by this success and determined to publish her own illustrated stories. Whenever Potter went on holiday to the Lake District or Scotland, she sent letters to young friends, illustrating them with quick sketches. Many of these letters were written to the children of her former governess Annie Carter Moore, particularly to Moore's eldest son Noel, who was often ill. In September 1893, Potter was on holiday at Eastwood in Dunkeld, Perthshire. She had run out of things to say to Noel, and so she told him a story about four little rabbits whose names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. It became one of the most famous children's letters ever written and the basis of Potter's future career as a writer-artist storyteller. In 1900, Potter revised her tale about the four little rabbits, and fashioned a dummy book of it, it has been suggested, in imitation of Helen Bannerman's 1899 bestseller The Story of Little Black Samba. Unable to find a buyer for the work, she published it for family and friends at her own expense in December 1901. It was drawn in black and white with a colored frontispiece. Family friend Canon Hardwick Ronsley had great faith in Potter's tale, recast it in didactic verse, and made the rounds of the London publishing houses. Frederick Warren and company had previously rejected the tale but, eager to compete in the booming small format children's book market, reconsidered and accepted the bunny book, as the firm called it, following the recommendation of their prominent children's book artist L. Leslie Brooke. The firm declined Ronsley's verse in favor of Potter's original prose, and Potter agreed to color her pen and ink illustrations, choosing the then new Henschel three color process to reproduce her watercolors. On October 2, 1902, The Tale of Peter Rabbit was published, and was an immediate success. It was followed the next year by The Tale of Squirrel Nutkin and The Tailor of Gloucester, which had also first been written as picture letters to the Moore children. Working with Norman Warren as her editor, Potter published two or three little books each year, 23 books in all. The last book in this format was Cicely Parsley's Nursery Rhymes in 1922, a collection of favorite rhymes. Although The Tale of Little Pig Robinson was not published until 1930, it had been written much earlier. Potter continued creating her little books until after the First World War, when her energies were increasingly directed toward her farming, sheep breeding, and land conservation.
The immense popularity of Potter's books was based on the lively quality of her illustrations, the non-didactic nature of her stories, the depiction of the rural countryside, and the imaginative qualities she lent to her animal characters. Potter was also a canny businesswoman. As early as 1903, she made and patented a Peter Rabbit doll. It was followed by other spin-off merchandise over the years, including painting books, board games, wallpaper, figurines, baby blankets and china tea sets. All were licensed by Frederick Warren and Company and earned Potter an independent income, as well as immense profits for her publisher. In 1905, Potter and Norman Warren became unofficially engaged. Potter's parents objected to the match because Warren was in trade and thus not socially suitable. The engagement lasted only one month until Warren died of pernicious anemia at age 37. That same year, Potter used some of her income and a small inheritance from an aunt to buy Hilltop Farm in near Sorry in the English Lake District near Windermere. Potter and Warren may have hoped that Hilltop Farm would be their holiday home, but after Warren's death, Potter went ahead with its purchase as she had always wanted to own that farm, and live in that charming village. The tenant farmer John Cannon and his family agreed to stay and to manage the farm for her while she made physical improvements and learned the techniques of fell farming and of raising livestock, including pigs, cows and chickens, the following year she added sheep. Realizing she needed to protect her boundaries, she sought advice from W. H. Helis & Son, a local firm of solicitors with offices in nearby Hawkshead. With William Helis acting for her she bought contiguous pasture and in 1909 the castle farm across the road from Hilltop Farm. She visited Hilltop at every opportunity, and her books written during this period such as The Tale of Ginger and Pickles, about the local shop in Nearsory and The Tale of Mrs. Tittlemouse, a woodmouse, reflect her increasing participation in village life and her delight in country living. Owning and managing these working farms required routine collaboration with the widely respected William Helis. By the summer of 1912, Helis had proposed marriage and Beatrix had accepted, although she did not immediately tell her parents, who once again disapproved because Helis was only a country solicitor. Potter and Helis were married on October 15, 1913, in London at St. Mary Abbott's in Kensington. The couple moved immediately to near Surrey, residing at Castle Cottage, the renovated farmhouse on Castle Farm which was 34 acres large. Hilltop remained a working farm but was now remodeled to allow for the tenant family and Potter's private studio and workshop. At last her own woman, Potter settled into the partnerships that shaped the rest of her life, her country solicitor husband and his large family, her farms, the Sori community and the predictable rounds of country life. The tale of Jemima Puddle Duck and the tale of Tom Kitten are representative of Hilltop Farm and of her farming life, and reflect her happiness with her country life. Rupert Potter died in 1914 and, with the outbreak of World War I, Potter, now a wealthy woman, persuaded her mother to move to the Lake District and found a property for her to rent in Surrey. Finding life in Surrey dull, Helen Potter soon moved to Lindeth Howe, now a 34-bedroomed hotel, a large house the Potter Shad previously rented for the summer in Bonus, on the other side of Lake Windermere. Potter continued to write stories for Frederick Warren and Company and fully participated in country life. She established a nursing trust for local villages, and served on various committees and councils responsible for footpaths and other rural issues. Soon after acquiring Hilltop Farm, Potter became keenly interested in the breeding and raising of Herdwick sheep, the indigenous fell sheep. In 1923, she bought a large sheep farm in the Troutbeck Valley called Troutbeck Park Farm, formerly a deer park, restoring its land with thousands of Herdwick sheep. This established her as one of the major Herdwick sheep farmers in the county. She was admired by her shepherds and farm managers for her willingness to experiment with the latest biological remedies for the common diseases of sheep, and for her employment of the best shepherds, sheep breeders, and farm managers. By the late 1920s Potter and her hilltop farm manager Tom Story had made a name for their prize-winning Herdwick flock, which took many prizes at the local agricultural shows, where Potter was often asked to serve as a judge. In 1942 she became president-elect of the Herdwick Sheep Breeders Association, the first time a woman had ever been elected, but died before taking office. Potter had been a disciple of the land conservation and preservation ideals of her longtime friend and mentor, Canon Hardwick Ronsley, the first secretary and founding member of the National Trust for Places of Historic Interest or Natural Beauty. She supported the efforts of the National Truce to preserve not just the places of extraordinary beauty but also those heads of valleys and low grazing lands that would be irreparably ruined by development. She was also an authority on the traditional Lakeland crafts, 
period furniture and stonework. She restored and preserved the farms that she bought or managed, making sure that each farmhouse had in it a piece of antique Lakeland furniture. Potter was interested in preserving not only the Herdwick sheep, but also the way of life of fell farming. In 1930 the Helizes became partners with the National Trust in buying and managing the fell farms included in the large Monk Coniston estate. The estate was composed of many farms spread over a wide area of northwestern Lancashire, including the Tarnhouse. Potter was the de facto estate manager for the trust for seven years until the National Trust could afford to buy most of the property back from her daughter. Stewardship of these farms earned her wide regard, but she was not without her critics, not the least of which were her contemporaries who felt she used her wealth in the position of her husband to acquire properties in advance of their being made public. She was notable in observing the problems of afforestation preserving the intake grazing lands, and husbanding the quarries and timber on these farms. All her farms were stocked with Herdwick sheep and frequently with Galloway cattle. Potter continued to write stories and to draw, although mostly for her own pleasure. Her books in the late 1920s included the semi-autobiographical The Fairy Caravan, a fanciful tale set in her beloved Troutbeck Fells. It was published only in the U.S. during Potter's lifetime, and not until 1952 in the U.K. Sister Anne Potter's version of the story of Bluebeard, was written especially for her American readers, but illustrated by Catherine Sturges. A final folk tale, Wag by Wall, was published posthumously by the Hornbook magazine in 1944. Potter was a generous patron of the Girl Guides, whose troops she allowed to make their summer encampments on her land, and whose company she enjoyed as an older woman. Potter and William Helis enjoyed a happy marriage of 30 years, continuing their farming and preservation efforts throughout the hard days of World War II. Although they were childless, Potter played an important role in William's large family, particularly enjoying her relationship with several nieces whom she helped educate, and giving comfort and aid to her husband's brothers and sisters. Potter died of complications from pneumonia and heart disease on December 22, 1943 at Castle Cottage and her remains were cremated at Carlton Crematorium. She left nearly all her property to the National Trust, including over of land, 16 farms, cottages and herds of cattle and herdwick sheep. Hers was the largest gift at that time to the National Trust, and it enabled the preservation of the land now included in the Lake District National Park and the continuation of fell farming. The central office of the National Trust in Swindon was named Helis in 2005 in her memory. William Helis continued his stewardship of their properties and of her literary and artistic work for the 18 months he survived her. When he died in August 1945, he left the remainder to the National Trust. Potter left almost all the original illustrations for her books to the National Trust. The copyright to her stories and merchandise was then given to her publisher Frederick Warren and Company, now a division of the Penguin Group. On January 1, 2014, the copyright expired in the UK and other countries with a 70 years after death limit. Hilltop Farm was opened to the public by the National Trust in 1946. Her artwork was displayed there until 1985 when it was moved to William Helis' former law offices in Hawkshead, also owned by the National Trust as the Beatrix Potter Gallery. Potter gave her folios of mycological drawings to the Armit Library and Museum in Embleside before her death. The Tale of Peter Rabbit is owned by Frederick Warren and Company, The Tailor of Gloucester by the Tate Gallery and The Tale of the Flopsy Bunnies by the British Museum. The largest public collection of her letters and drawings is the Leslie Linder Bequest and Leslie Linder Collection at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. In the United States, the largest public collections are those in the Rare Book Department of the Free Library of Philadelphia, and the Cots and Children's Library at Princeton University. In 2015 a manuscript for an unpublished book was discovered by Joe Hanks, a publisher at Penguin Random House Children's Books, in the Victoria and Albert Museum Archive. The book The Tale of Kitty in Boots, with illustrations by Quentin Blake, was published September 1, 2016, to mark the 150th anniversary of Potter's birth. In 2017, The Art of Beatrix Potter, Sketches, Paintings, and illustrations by Emily Zach was published after San Francisco publisher Chronicle Books decided to mark the 150th anniversary of Beatrix Potter's birth by showing that she was far more than a 19th century weekend painter. She was an artist of astonishing range. In December 2017, the asteroid 13975 Beatrix Potter, discovered by Belgian astronomer Eric Elst in 1992, was named in her memory. There are many interpretations of Potter's literary work the sources of her art, and her life and times.
These include critical evaluations of her corpus of children's literature, and modernist interpretations of Humphrey Carpenter and Catherine Chandler. Judy Taylor, That Naughty Rabbit, Beatrix Potter and Peter Rabbit, Rev. 2002, tells the story of the first publication and many editions. Potter's country life and her farming has also been widely discussed in the work of Susan Denyer and by other authors in the publications of the National Trust. Potter's work as a scientific illustrator and her work in mycology is highlighted in several chapters in Linda Lear, Beatrix Potter, A Life in Nature, 2007, Beatrix Potter, The Extraordinary Life of a Victorian Genius, 2008. In 1971, a ballet film was released, The Tales of Beatrix Potter, directed by Reginald Mills, set to music by John Lanchbury with choreography by Frederick Ashton, and performed in character costume by members of the Royal Ballet and the Royal Opera House Orchestra. The ballet of the same name has been performed by other dance companies around the world. In 1992, Potter's famous children's book The Tale of Benjamin Bunny was featured in the film Lorenzo's Oil. Potter is also featured in Susan Wittig-Albert's series of light mysteries called The Cottage Tales of Beatrix Potter. The first of the eight-book series is Tale of Illtop Farm, 2004, which deals with Potter's life in the Lake District in the village of Near Surrey between 1905 and 1913. More recently, John Patrick is adapting a number of Beatrix Potter's tales into an upcoming live-action-slash-animated musical feature film for his brand-new film studio, called Storybook Studio. The film will be titled Beatrix Potter's The Tales of Peter Rabbit and Friends. English actress Jackie Weiner will play Beatrix Potter herself, with the voices of Sienna Adams as Peter Rabbit, Ronan McCoy as Benjamin Bunny, Ella Bradley as Tom Kitten, Kyle Tannis as Mr. Jeremy Fisher, Leslie Finelli as Mrs. Tiggy Winkle and Karen Zikas as Jemima Puddle Duck. John Patrick has released several clips of his upcoming film to YouTube. In 1982, the BBC produced The Tale of Beatrix Potter. This dramatization of her life was written by John Hawksworth directed by Bill Hayes, and starred Holly Art and Penelope Wilton as the young and adult Beatrix, respectively. The World of Peter Rabbit and Friends, a TV series based on her stories, which starred actress Neve Cusack as Beatrix Potter, has been released on VHS by Pickwick Video and later Carlton Video. In 2006, Chris Noonan directed Miss Potter, a biographical film of Potter's life focusing on her early career and romance with her editor Norman Warren. The film stars Renee Zellweger. Ewan McGregor and Emily Watson. On February 9, 2018, Columbia Pictures released Peter Rabbit, directed by Will Gluck, based on the work by Potter. The 23 Tales. Other books. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.